Welcome to Book Staggers. It's okay. a new year now. What? It's been so long since we filmed. We are doing our in-depth discussion of Jane Eyre today. Elise is feeling a little bit under the weather, so if she's more quiet than usual, that's why. So Jane Eyre is basically about a girl named Jane. Uh, she's an orphan and we start with her as a child when she's being raised by her aunt and living with her cousins and her aunt's not very nice to her. And Neither she gets, are her cousins. No, no one's nice to Jane. But then she goes to Lowood, which is like a boarding school for girls. And so she stays there for her education and she also ends up being a teacher there for a little bit and then she decides she wants to see more of the world she wants to experience more and meet more people and do more and so she ends up going to be a governess for this rich guy called Mr. Rochester yeah. and then you know creepy things happen and she goes hey this guy seems great <laughs> creepy things happen she's like wow yeah at the wedding she realizes that Mr. Rochester actually already has a wife and so she ends up running away so that she's not tempted to be his mistress and ends up meeting her cousins and then gets money and then she comes back to Rochester after his wife dies and look and a lot happens in the final bit of the book. Basically nothing at all happens in the first There's half. a lot of waffle. Just a bit of a disclaimer. Jane Eyre, yes it's a classic and you know, the writing in parts is definitely very beautiful and you're like, wow, cool. But also, a lot of this is description. <laughs> I reckon this would have been an awesome short story if you <laughs> just, took out just the last bit. a lot of the description. But like, I get that the description was building the character and all that sort of stuff. But you know, just personally as a reader, I'm not a fan of that. Thinking back on the book, I think this book is definitely more fun to discuss than it is to read. I feel like it's one that you'd want to analyze for literature rather than just reading for funsies. Jane, you kind of get a really good sense of her from the book. I can say I did like her like as a character. I thought she was interesting and I appreciated how she was so like willful and um, wanting to be independent. Mm. But like, God, it just went on. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's like a coming of the age thing. So you see her kind of growing up and realizing and learning her ideals. But I think from the point that we see her as a kid. She's got this really strong thing that she wants to be good and she wants to be right. And so she tries her best. And so then that way when people wrong her, she's like, no, 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 I was in the right because of my <laughs> virtues. And she's quite plain. She often like talks about herself being not pretty and not beautiful and not super talented Just and stuff. Just a plain looking girl. Yeah. But what passion in her. Yeah. What fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote about Charlotte Bronte. Oh. Charlotte Bronte, Jane Eyre, whatever. It's cool because like she's so content being plain and she doesn't try and pretend that she's not. She kind of accepts it, but with what she's got, she makes her way in the world and she becomes a governess and all that sort of stuff. So I thought that was really cool. I was yeah, like, good and on then you, Jane. she's a rich man's wife, which I think is a good goal. Yeah. Well, she, well, she has a really strong like independence, which is like evident from the start. Absolutely. But I think... I think even when Mr. Rochester had proposed to her and she'd agreed, he would try and shower her in things and she was like, nah, bitch. And I think because she didn't have a lot to bring to the table as well, she probably felt like... At that know, point, in terms of money and um, status, I guess. You know? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I think my favorite bit actually is when she's younger and she's talking to her aunt. She's talking to Mrs. Reed and it's just after, I think, the dude came to talk about Lowood. Yeah, to talk about Lowood. I can't remember his name either. But <laughs> the names are hard. <laughs> the dude came to talk to to meet Jane and um Mrs. Reed was just like going on about how oh she's a liar and everything. And Jane was sitting there like, bitch. And then after the dude left and she was like, I'm not a liar. You're a liar. So f you. I liked that bit. Yeah, yeah. When That's she kind of stood favorite. up to her aunt and her aunt was terrified because her aunt was like shocked and it was kind of like you know this is her abuser and she stood up to her and her yeah. aunt just like didn't even realize I like liked, I like the way it was written that she was literally like trembling with rage yeah like she was so like angry I, about it which I think yeah. is fair like just like that sort of like righteous fury little Jane like knew that she was being mistreated and her cousins are described as kind of being like prettier than her and being looked better on than her and she's sort of like just because I'm not at the same level as them doesn't mean I don't deserve to be treated like a human. And I'm like, speaking of Mrs. Reed, she is such a bitch. <laughs> so as a kid, it's like, yeah, okay. So she's had this kid thrust upon her. You can understand having a bit of anguish there. You know, she's got to spend more money. But like, she basically like relinquished Jane of like 
being a relation or anything like that. As soon as she went to Lowood, was just like, yeah, whatever, you take her. Yeah, because uh, Mrs. Reed's husband was Jane's uncle. Mm -hmm. And like the bit where she tells Mrs. Reed, like, he can see you and he is not happy. Like when she was telling yeah. her off, I was like, damn. But then later on, right, we find out that Mrs. Reed is on her deathbed because I think she had a stroke after her son overdosed on drugs or died of something, you know. Yeah. So she comes back to visit her aunt because apparently the aunt is being like, I want to see Jane Eyre. And Jane's just like, I, and she's kind of like in her heart forgiven and is like, whatever. Like, she's not going to forget, but she's just kind of like, I can't be bothered holding hate for this woman. You know, she's about to die. I don't need that stress in my life. And then, and then she goes back and finds out that Mrs. Reed, her aunt, has kept a letter from one of her other uncles who was saying that he wanted to adopt, adopt Jane because he didn't have any kids of his own and he hadn't had time to get a wife or anything. So he wanted to adopt her and give his fortune to her and stuff. And he was like a rich dude. Dick move, Mrs. Reed. And this was right before she went to Lowood. And so Jane finds this out and instead of freaking out and being angry, she's like, all right, like, that sucks that you did that, but, you know, why did you do that? And so she just wants to find out why. And then That's fair. <laughs> Mrs. Reed is like, because I hated you? And you're like... Damn! And, and, then, and then Jane's like, well, I've forgiven you, and tries to, like, hold her hands, and she pulls her hands away, and he's like, no, I still hate you! And I was like, what the hell? So she's asked Jane to, like, come all this way. Just to be like, I still hate you. I still you. hate you, but I thought I'd let you know that I did this so that I can go to heaven, because I want to, like, <laughs> not have any sins. And Jane's just like, I, bitch. But she ends up getting along with, like, her, her cousins. She just kind of chats to them as, like, women. And she's sort of like, you know, I'm never going to see them again after this, but I may as well just enjoy their company now. And then she goes back and I'm just like, wow, that's, that's, like I would be so mad. <laughs> like that's a really mature decision. And I'm like, I could not do that. I'd be pissed yeah. off. It kind of like, showed as well, like her passions, like, or her like outspokenness. Like she was kind of like, well, there's no point wasting my energy on this family anymore. So, you know. I've got stuff to go back to, so bye. I mean, that makes sense. But yeah. me, as a person, I'd still be like, I am holding a grudge for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I was like, as if you'd go back. I'd be like, nah, you suck. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rip. The good thing about, like, Jane Eyre is that it starts as an autobiography and then it kind of has these gothic and romantic elements to it. And those are probably my favorite bits. The bits where stuff was happening. That was my favorite bit. Like, when Mr. Rochester dressed up as the gypsy woman and was, like, telling everyone their fortunes, I was like... Fantastic. I love this image. And then when you, you he, like, Jane wakes up and his bed's on fire and she rescues him and, like, later on when someone gets bitten. And, and Jane, the whole time, is just so calm and chill. But it's good with all, like, the gothic elements because it sort of felt like a mystery in that some people knew things, some people didn't, and it was very ominous the moment she kind of arrived at Mr. Rochester's manor. But in saying that, Jane made no effort to connect the dots. And anytime something interesting happened... It would kind of happen over a page. She'd be like, oh yeah, this happened and I learned this and how interesting and da da da. And then the next day she'd be like, so lessons. And I was like, are we not gonna, all right, moving on, I guess. And then she was like, I know out. what you want to read this book for. Yeah. It's for the lesson. It was interesting because like she spread it out a lot. So like something would happen and you'd be like, that's weird. And then just nothing weird would happen for ages. She and then something busy else doing would lessons. happen. Yeah, and then in, in like the final page, it's like, oh, by the way, Mr. Rochester's house was burned down by his crazy wife and and his hand is now gone and, and he can't well, he see. he lost his sight. And I'm like, yeah. all right. Just casual shit. Just thanks. Cool. Fun knowledge. So I like that she was really interested in being an equal in every sense of that. So when she was little, she wanted to be equal to her cousin, she wanted to be treated as an equal. When she was at Lowood studying, she wanted to be treated as of equal intelligence and she worked hard so that she could be. And she always looked up to people that were of higher intelligence and had this thirst for knowledge because she was like, I want to learn, I want to know things. And then when she's with Mr. Rochester as well, she's like, I want to be your equal and blah, blah, blah. She kind of feels very nervous and put off when she doesn't feel like he's equal. So like when, when he's entertaining guests, she's like, I can feel the difference in class because you know, they're all ladies and they're dressed up and I'm just plain and a governess. And yeah, it was just really interesting seeing that dynamic as well change once she came back to him after everything had happened. And she was now suddenly like 
She had the money that she got from her uncle who died and left it to her. She now had family and cousins who she knew of and could visit and, and friends that were not just, you know, at Mr. Rochester's estate. And it was just really interesting, her being able to come back and f feeling in the way that Charlotte was writing that she was now way more confident in herself and all that sort of stuff. So I noticed that whenever um, Jane was like upset or like sort of distressed about something where she couldn't really do anything because of her status mm. like because she couldn't really show how passionate she was in some sort of things when she, she was like, like repressed yeah, yeah repressed that's the word yeah. <laughs> when she was feeling repressed and she couldn't act like she wanted to that's sort of when bertha would act out as well mm. so like bertha was like a reflection yeah i did notice that yeah it was really cool because it was so sort of like is there a connection here? And I think especially because Bertha, like, they didn't really say she, and you didn't really know what its name was. It was kind of an it and this sort of entity. And then you find out later that it is Mr. Rochester's wife that he's kept up there. But, yeah, it sort of seems like it's just this random thing and you don't really have this connection to it. So it makes sense that it becomes, like, a symbol of, like, Jane acting out, I suppose. And that's one way of looking at it. I mean, I'm sure you could look at it different ways. And that may not even be the reason. But you know what? This is reading and you can take what you want from it. There's going to be there's well. going to be things that like people are going to read into and be like, "Wow, this means this." And you're like, "Really cool interpretation. I didn't get that, but good for you, you know? That makes it interesting." With classic literature, I find a lot of the time if you find that symbolism or the meaning behind stuff, it makes it way more interesting. Like the reading of Bertha being a symbol of Jane acting out was really interesting and the fact that she had to die uh, before Jane could marry Mr. Rochester, it's almost like a part of Jane had to die before she could do that, you know. That's that's if you're thinking of it, because most people think of this as a very, like, feminist text because mm. she's so, like, wanting to be equal to who she's marrying and um, she talks about how... Uh, she like, wants to get married for love as well. Like, yeah. when her cousin is trying to marry her, she's like, yeah, but you don't love me, so I don't want to do that and I was like that's cool I don't like how her issue is like the love and not the fact that he's her cousin but whatever that's I mean fine. in that time it's very common I know I just don't like it there's there's a line in it though that Jane has like when she first finds out um about Mr. Rochester's wife and she decides that she's gonna leave because she's like well if I stay then I'm just gonna end up being his mistress and I don't want to do that because of her virtues and it was just so interesting because there's a line in it which I could have found, but it's a big book and I don't know whereabouts it is because there's a lot of things that happen around it. But but she basically says, you know, what's the point of having virtues if as soon as, you know, it, times get hard, we throw them to the wind and ignore them. And I was like, that's really cool that she was standing by her virtues, even though it would have been easier not to. Like it would have been so much easier for her to just stay and she would have had a good life because she would have been showered in riches and stuff. But she was like, no that's not okay and I don't think I could live with myself if it was like that, you know? And then later on, how could she kind of stand by her virtues if she didn't now? So I thought that was really cool and showed kind of the strength in Jane's character, I guess. Who is your favourite character? Uh, you know what? My favourite character is Mr. Rochester when he dressed us up as the gypsy. That's my favourite character. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that was like one of the more interesting parts. I was like, who's this gypsy woman? Ooh, telling the future. The gypsy woman yeah. is my favourite. And then when you find out it's him, you're like... I think my favourite character was either Helen Burns at Lowood because of the friendship that that gave Jane. And then also I really liked Bessie. Because at the time, I remember as like when Jane was a kid, her being like, oh, Bessie is mean to me. But then Bessie was kind of looking out for her and being harsh on her because she knew that Jane could do more. Uh, when Jane's older and Bessie comes to visit and she's got a husband and kids and Jane kind of like gets along really well. And it's just really sweet, like reading about how happy Jane was to kind of see Bessie and have that sort of um, familiar energy around her. So I, I like that just because of the effects that that had yeah, on Jane. Like the bit where Bessie's dropping her off at the carriage to be taken to yeah. Lowood. I was like, this is sweet. Yeah. I like this. It was really nice. And then like when Jane's got Bessie's kid on her lap and just chilling and like sometimes Bessie would reprimand the kids and Jane's like, I remember when she reprimanded me like that. And I was like, aww. <laughs> Overall, who do you think would enjoy this book? People who like uh, the other 
Bronte ones. <laughs> I have not read any of them. <laughs> if you like literature, you'll probably enjoy reading this more just because it's it's good to analyze. If you're if, a fan of the classics. Yeah, if you're a fan of classics or historical it, fiction. Yeah, if you like historical fiction, if you're interested in like gothic stuff, I would say read this because it's like one of the classic things that a lot of people draw off. Like I know Del Toro drew off this when he was making Crimson Peak. Obviously, Crimson Peak is more interesting, but it's fine. So what would you rate this book if you had to give up a right home? I don't know, like two out of five. <laughs> yeah. I gave it a three out of five because reflecting on it, I think there were some interesting things that happened. And I think that there were some cool lines that I remember and like sort of struck a chord. And I was like, that's cool. That's awesome. I don't have the attention span for a book like this. Yeah. Like, I did I zone out a lot. So I would be reading and then I would kind of be like, what did I just read the last three pages? And then I would kind of go back and nothing had happened. It was sort of just descriptions and stuff like that, which, you know, I'm sure you could analyze and all that and you could find some interesting stuff, but you know, we're sort of reading for fun. So we usually rate on how much we enjoyed it. So I gave it three stars because if this was a short story, probably would have really liked it because of the weird things that happened. But alas, it was not a short story and it took a long Oh, that's all for our in-depth discussion of Jane Eyre. If there's anything that we missed that you want us to talk about, I'm sure there's tons because this is a classic, so I'm sure people have done this to death. If you have, um, like, actual strong feelings about this book, please let us know. Like, yeah. let us know what you find nice. I'd love to chat to someone who, like, loves this book and someone who hates this book. Yeah, like, I want to, like, see what people can love about it. Because yeah. maybe, like, talking to somebody who, like, really, really enjoys it would make yeah. me, like, rethink. Exactly. And I'm, I'm pretty on the fence about it. Like, I, I think Jane was, like, cool and interesting as a character, but I think there was just like a lot there. So for me, it was just like hard to read and you had to concentrate. And it felt, it felt like one of those books that was trying to kind of have all this like extra layers in it. And I just didn't have the time to go deeper. So we didn't. I hope you have a good day. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>